In Web Developer, construction of the layout from the design will always be undertaken by CSS. And I believe that most programmers will know grid in CSS because this is an extremely important and outstanding. Creating grid layouts in CSS is a powerful way to structure your website. CSS Grid Layout is a two-dimensional grid system that allows you to divide pages into rows and columns, making it easy to create complex layouts. But do you know about the Flexbox feature in CSS? Flexbox is another powerful layout model in CSS, especially useful for creating one-dimensional layouts either in rows or columns. It provides an efficient way to lay out, align, and distribute space among items in a container, even when their size is unknown or dynamic. It's strange, isn't it? During actual work, if you already know these two features in CSS, you will often encounter the problem of not knowing whether to choose grid or flexbox to handle. Because it all has the same layout editing capabilities. It is difficult to distinguish it clearly. But not! Let's look closely at the concept of grid and flex again. Because in concept, it already helps us differentiate. As for the grid, its concept has emphasized. CSS grid layout is a two-dimensional. As for flexbox, the concept says. Especially useful for creating one-dimensional layouts. That's the most obvious difference. As follows? In every website layout, two dimensions exist. These are vertical and horizontal. Every modern UI UX design will always adhere to this two-dimensional rule, whether it is a small element or a large layout, almost without exception. And when we need to arrange the layout of a list of elements, these elements are called items. An element that covers all items will be called a container. The programmer's task is to analyze and evaluate whether to use grid or flex container. So now we will work together with some specific examples to improve the brain's response in choosing flex or grid in design. In the first example, we have a general layout design for the entire website. According to the design, we just have to sort it by column and moderately arranged in rows. And when you have to use it in two directions, we will always prioritize the grid. As follows, the container is the parent element that surrounds the entire website. I declare a display grid to arrange. The elements inside will be divided into three columns. The first column is 200 pixels in size. The remaining two columns will be divided equally. We will also have three rows. The first and last rows corresponding to the header and footer are only 70 pixels wide. The remaining space belongs to the second row. After setting the column and row sizes for the grid, now at each element, I will name the area to arrange the corresponding location. And to make it easier to handle, I choose the area name to match the element name. After you have finished naming, at the container class, declare grid template areas to divide the area. We have three rows, each row has three columns. The first row of headers will take up all the space of the three columns. Second row, the first column will belong to nav, the remaining two columns will belong to main. The last line, the first column still belongs to nav, the remaining two columns will belong to the footer. So that's how we use grid to divide a layout simply, optimally, and scientifically. In example two, we will go to the header of a specific website. It is made up of two elements, logo and a group nav button. The requirement is to put these two elements on both sides of the screen. That means they will be in the same row. And like I said, with one dimensional problems, please prioritize using the flex feature if possible. To have the content pushed to both sides, I have justified content space between. So why don't we use grid? In fact, grids can do everything flex boxes can do. I'm not sure whether it will be more concise or not. For example here, when using flex, I only need two lines of code to fulfill the above requirements. But what if it's a grid? First I declare display grid. Then I proceed to divide it into two columns. Finally, justify content space between to move the content to both sides. So it can still be built. However, it requires three lines of code because the columns must be divided. So clearly in this case, flex is more concise. Going into more detailed elements. For example, for this button group, you want it to be arranged more evenly. And of course it is in the same row. Because it only requires one-way operation, we use Flexbox again. With a line item centered to align it evenly. The distance of each button is 10 pixels. 
Next is example three. We go to the menu section of the nav on the left side of the website. The requirement now is to arrange the items into rows. Each row is 10 pixels apart. In particular, item settings will be translated to the bottom of the website. This topic is a bit strange. However, obviously whether it is columns or rows, we will still be working with only one dimension. So I will still prioritize using flex to see if it is effective. So in nav, I will declare display flex. By default, the items will be in a row. If you want to convert it into a column, just declare flex direction column. At this point, just declare gap to specify the distance of each row. But there's the final problem, which is moving the setting item to the bottom of the page. At this point, your attempt to use the Ustify content attribute will not work. Because of the nature of this attribute, it will sort all the items inside, not just the last item. There will be people who think that maybe they have to use position in CSS. But actually, no need. I have a simpler trick if you want the last item below to use the website. That is, the distance between it and the content above will be maximized. So now just use the margin top property with the top value. Our problem will be resolved immediately. It's great, right? Through the three examples above, I want to help people better reflect on when to use grid and flex. The content in the video is general and does not go into detail for each feature. So if you want me to make a more detailed video about each feature, please leave a comment to let me know. Thank you very much. See you everyone in the next video.